so uh we're we're all good we're all on uh huh. we're, we're we're all on and uh <laughs> your show and da and david david can you can we hear you oh here i am i'm here good. yes okay I, I i think we're good my, my work mm. okay, okay Michael, so we mute okay They're beginning. Oh, look at the flowers. One, two, three, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's like Jess. It's Jess. 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 Jess.
So I'm going to leave this here for you, if it's the gold one here. I'm going to put it away. So you say, the Lord is is kind of merciful. Raise your hand and repeat. One, two, three. Then you get back to your seat. And then for the second reading. So you have to come up bow to the altar. And come over here. And then I'll show you where the second reading is. The brown ribbon. Yep, so you just bow to the altar. Okay. Okay. And then you come up. This is brown. What's your name? Jessica. Sorry. Nice to meet you. Um, and the, 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 so this it actually goes out of order. So it's going to be like this because she's going to do the song. Okay, first. so I'll go backwards. So I, I don't know why I did it that way. It's messed up. That's fine. So you go backwards. It's this one. This yep. is the one you have, right? Yep. Okay. So just mark with this. So it's Great. You. So, so don't read, don't read the red. Just read the black. So read the a reading, a reading from, from the first, from the first okay. letter. Okay. Great. For the word of the Lord. That was a question I had. Thanks be to God. Okay. And then um, people will say thanks be to God, and then you go back and bow to the altar and go back to your seat. Okay. Thanks be to God after I'm finished with everything. Because the people will say that after you say that. Okay. Most, at least some will know. Okay. <laughs> some will know to say that. For sure. Okay. And then. Um, and then you would just bow facing the altar. Okay. So I don't, I don't just, I can stay with my hands. Yes. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Great. Yep. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Jessica. Thank you. Well, no, I mean, it, it's we're starting. a quick note uh, whoever's using Karen's iPod oh thank you for for hitting mute
they've asked me to tell everyone that there's a slight delay.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Michael and Elizabeth on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this couple, servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, out your grace on these your servants, Michael and Elizabeth, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through Christ our Lord. I ask you to please be seated to listen to the word of the Lord. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering 
through the lattices. My lover speaks. He says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me, and I to him. He says to me, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm, for stern as death is love, relentless as the netherworld is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. The word of the Lord. The response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him and his justice towards children's children among those who keep his covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also, also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God.
with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it had come without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana and Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Michael and Elizabeth, what a great joy it is for all of us to be here with you and those of your relatives who are watching online, <coughs> to be able to say, we're here with you. We love you on this special day when the two of you are going to make your consent on terms of entering into marriage public. You've had that desire now for a long time. And I've seen this beautiful desire grow in you as we've gone through marriage preparation. And in thinking about the word, I guess I'd like to use, I thought about the word authentic. That each one of you is authentic in who you are and with each other. And it's very beautiful because brothers and sisters, Mike and Elizabeth had to do marriage prep virtually, which is not easy. It's not, not I hope I put into it. And how you were ready for this moment to approach not just today, not just your wedding day, because some some couples just focus on all the plans for the wedding, but your life going forward. And you're ready, you're happy, you're excited, and you know each other, you know the good, you know the bad, and you say, yes, I'm still willing to say yes, Elizabeth to Michael and Michael to Elizabeth, that I will be with you in good times and in bad, sickness and in health. Whatever may happen in your lives, you know you will have each other's back. And that's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, and it's one of the greatest gifts I think that God can give anybody, is to find someone with whom they can be themselves and share their whole life together. But it's not just going to be a good friendship. It's going to be that Christ will unite you today in the sacrament of matrimony to be one flesh. So it's not going to be any more Michael and Elizabeth or even like that. You're going to be one in this beautiful way that you'll perceive as your married life goes forward. But today, going forward, it's going to be very different to say, this is not my girlfriend, it's not my fiancé, this is my wife. This is not my boyfriend, this is my husband. And how beautiful is that? I remember, Elizabeth, when you got engaged, the look of this delight on your face, you couldn't stop smiling. You were happy like, for like weeks, smiling the whole time. And brothers and sisters, it's so beautiful because it wasn't just because she had a new piece of jewelry. It's because there was something much deeper there going on. And again, I think what Christ is doing in your lives has done and will do just is going to build on what you already have together. And you know, you will have challenges as everybody does in life. And the gospel today reminds us that you chose that sometimes it's necessary to have challenges to see the glory of God. You know, right now, it's the pandemic. A couple of months ago, we weren't sure if this was even going to happen. We weren't sure, can we do this? How's it gonna work? If this had happened a couple years ago, almost no one would be here. No one would be, would be able to be watching. And yet God has provided in a way that may not be the way you had in mind, but a way that turns out to be beautiful nonetheless. 
And it's beautiful because whenever Jesus was consulted at the wedding feast at Cana, and they said, he doesn't, you don't have any wine, we don't, well, maybe you do, but at the Jewish times, a wedding was not like one day. It was a week. So to have no wine after a day or two was a huge problem. So what did Jesus do? He didn't go to the 7-Eleven and get some boxed wine. Jesus made 120 gallons or 180 gallons, whichever you prefer, of the best wine. The best wine. Jesus is generous. And why? Because his mother said, son, they don't have any wine. And so whenever the Lord comes into the picture, whenever he's invited, he turns everything up, upside down for the better. And it was done in an understated way. There was no fire from heaven. There was no, you know, great, you know, shabam. It was, the Lord just said, okay, there it is, done. So when you have need of the Lord, never hesitate to invite him into your life, to thank him for the good things that will come and to put him into the times and you say, Lord, we just don't know what to do. And Mary, of course, Mary's last words in the Bible are the one that you hear in this reading. Do whatever he tells you. Mary, of course, always takes good care of all of her children. So stay close. You've heard me say this often enough. Stay close to Our Lady in your married life. She will love you. She will help you. She will be your companion, your intercessor, and she will be able to obtain for you whatever it is you need. And so today, as your family, even from afar, shares in your joy, today is a day that even the Lord himself rejoices with great, great, a big smile on his face because he said, this is what I planned for you, and I'm so happy for you. So today on your wedding day, for your married life, for your friends and your family, because on this special day, when Christ joins you together to be husband and wife, what he invites you to do, as he invites this, is Mary trusted in his goodness. He invites you at every moment of your day to allow him to be part of that, and he also wants you to be testimony, to give testimony in the world to a world that needs a beautiful example of a happily married couple. So may the Lord bless you. May you, in the good times and in the challenging times, know that Christ is with you. Know of my prayers, because I'm so grateful that you invited me to be part of this beautiful day. And may the Lord fill your hearts with joy and gr joy and peace today that fill your lives every day. May he always be part for you, the source of your joy. And may the Lord bless you in whatever way you need, because today is not the end. It's a new beginning of Michael and Elizabeth together forever. I invite you to come forward to make your vows. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly, abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. So the response to the first question is, I have. Michael and Elizabeth, have you, come here, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and heartedly? And the next two is, I am. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Very good. And since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, please turn and join your hands and declare your consent before God and his church.
The Lord in his kindness, strength, and consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rings, please. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Please stand for the praise of the faithful. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayer. prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that in all families throughout the world, this, this uh, groom and bride, and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the relatives and friends and for all who have a couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom, whom the Lord is calling to enter another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world and for lasting peace among all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for all those uh, who are unable to attend this wedding today, who can't be here in person, but are here in spirit or online. We especially pray for David, Karen, and Will Brown, Louise and Mike, Robert Brown, Mary Martha Teig, Kathleen and Robert Reed, and all of uh, Michael Schaefer, Reed and Young Cousins, and Rosemary and David Young. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the deceased family members uh, as well who are, who are looking down uh, from heaven upon this beautiful couple. For Mopsy and Sage Burroughs, Muriel and Edwin Kennedy, Jesse Mae Chappelle, Maddie B. Francis, Thelma Webster, Margaret Curtin and Joseph Teig, Carl Schaefer Sr., Paul and Florence Schaefer, Nicholas Schaefer, Leonard Marion Schaefer. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Michael and Elizabeth seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. I ask you to please be seated for a very brief musical meditation. Oh. 
I should all please stand with me, please. And let us pray together in the words Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I invite Michael and Elizabeth to come forward and to kneel, please, to receive the nuptial blessing. They are already married, but it's the beautiful blessing of the church over them and their life together. Now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might not be, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they, may be, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Elizabeth, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that, acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children, and grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Please stand. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. And it is my great privilege to present to you for the first time, Michael and Elizabeth, husband and wife. You're married. Are they married? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounded official, but I didn't know what it was. Like David. Yeah, yes, that was very nice. Terrific. It's perfect. Yes. I think they're coming back. Young. Priest or Michael? 
Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. Oh, what did she do? Louise, you're a hoot. You're <laughs> terrific, Louise. <laughs> so I don't have a microphone, so they can't be heard. That's right. <laughs> She's waving way better. Outstanding. Love it. Love it. Love it. You look beautiful. Where's Michael? Where's Michael? Where's Michael? <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats, Mike. Hi, Shay. 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 Hi, So that's good. Ernestine? Yes, is that Ernestine? Yeah. Hi, Ernestine. Hi, yeah, Ernestine. Yes. Hi. 